Hey y'all, I'm Scarlett Vixen. And I'm Avis Andrew. And welcome to the main stage Q&A edition. <laughs> Q&A, honey. So what's the Q&A edition, girl? So Q&A, so when we start our YouTube channel, a lot of y'all hoes like, bitch, y'all just talk about RuPaul, but we don't know anything about y'all. And it took us some time, but myself and Scarlett both kind of posted um, a little, oh, give us some questions, you guys. We're gonna do a Q&A on our Instagram. And you guys showed up and showed out, honey, with the questions. So we're gonna answer a few questions for you all today. I think we have a total of about 10 to 12 questions. So you guys can get to know us a little bit more. And we just keep it coming, honey. We're gonna do some more videos like this. And we're gonna keep it spicy and just entertain you all. Yeah, so pour yourself a little glass of um, tea because we are about to spill it all today. Honey, y'all might find out some things that, honey, our closest friends might not even know. Honey, you might find out some things you don't want to know. <laughs> but we're gonna tell y'all. Here. So I thought that the best question to start off with is, what made you decide to start this channel? So long story short, I was basically performing in Atlanta, but then I moved to go back home, stopped performing, then moved back to Atlanta, and I never really started performing again. Um, and I think part of the reason why was because I was scared of performing and not being as good as I was before, mm. or like being better, because obviously you're supposed to elevate yourself. So I said, Bitch, if you're gonna do drag again, you're gonna be the most sickening drag queen ever. So, thousands of dollars later, I have custom made outfits, I have custom made wigs, all the fucking makeup you can think of. And basically, at this point, COVID happened. So, it's like, fuck, I can't even go out and perform in bars or anything. So, what's the next thing that I could do? So, I was like, well, I'm obsessed with YouTube. So, I mean, why not start a YouTube channel doing something I enjoy? And what do I enjoy? Drag Race. So I thought of the only other bitch I know who is obsessed with Drag Race as much as I am. And I remember I called you because I was driving. I was like, this was in December. I was like, bitch, what if we did a YouTube channel where we like critique people's outfit, like fashion photo review? And what were you thinking when I called you? I was just like, <laughs> I'm like, we ain't gonna do no fucking video. I'm like, we ain't gonna never do no fucking YouTube or anything like that. And to be very honest, I've told many of my friends that I've always wanted to start mm -hmm. a YouTube channel. Just not necessarily about drag race, but just, you know, talking shit, doing stupid challenges, things of that nature. So I think, to be honest, kind of right now, I feel like it's kind of a intertwine of both Scarlett and myself, you yeah. know? Um, kind of both of our things coming together. We both like talking shit, we both like doing silly stuff. So it's been actually working out so far, but I honestly never thought this would happen. Yeah, I also was like, do I think it's gonna happen? I was like, no, let me make this my resolution. So bitch, I went on Amazon, bought a green screen, bought a ring light, got a new phone, got a laptop. Bitch, I got everything. I was like, if I don't fucking do this channel now, then like, I'm never gonna do it. So then, here we are. Here we are. To be very honest, I'm kind of thankful for Scarlett because bitch, I'm, as much as, if I, as I wanted to start a YouTube channel, which I never would have like, took it to that next level, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I appreciate my girl for, you know, pulling me in, honey, and just let our ideas flow. And you know, here we are, we love it. We hope to be here a while. Yeah, and especially like since I started this to like work on my drag more pitch, every fucking Saturday I am in phase. Mm -hmm. I've tried different makeup styles. I've worn the clothes that I've actually gotten. I've worn the wigs. I've already learned so much more about drag than I did before. So hopefully it's something that continues. Yeah, and you've been time, bitch, because I'm like, bitch, when I pull up I at know. two o'clock, I don't wanna be, be waiting ready. around for you. So get your ass up and get ready. And, and bitch, be ready. Y'all can't tell me I am not a film editor at this <laughs> point, bitch, because I know everything about Adobe Premiere Pro. <laughs> you add it to the resume, bitch. Girl. <laughs> okay, you guys, so the next question was kind of directed to me and then also Johnny, so we kind of intertwined it. Yes. So it said, Avis Andrew, you're kind of cute. Are you currently dating anyone? Secondly, are you in Scarlet Dating? <laughs> so, uh, this is news to me, are we dating girls? <laughs> so no, Scarlet and I are not dating, we're just very close friends. Scarlet and I have known each other for about, how many years now, girl? At least since 2015. Yeah, so we're going on about seven years now. So we kind of know each other pretty well, and I would say we've gotten a lot closer within the past two to three years. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we just we just kick it all the time. You know, you'll see us out at dinner, honey, you'll see us at your local Target, you'll see us at your local Blake's. All that fun stuff. This is a good Judy, honey, so no, we're not dating. But to you to ask that question, honey, I am currently looking. I'm looking for oh. my happily ever after. Um, you know, so we'll see what happens, but I am currently single. 
So any guys that may be a little bit interested, you know, shoot us an email at the main stage channel at gmail.com, honey. And his Instagram is down below. The Instagram is down below, honey. Make sure you follow and slide those DMs too. Okay. If you are really about it, send an email to the main stage channel and send me a DM. How about that, honey? And stay tuned for our dating episode. <laughs> honey, where we see if Andrew can get a man. The last Ooh. one stands. <laughs> The next question is, is there anything that you've learned about yourself during the pandemic? I feel like this person wants us to get a little more, a little more real, a little more, a little more direct. Y'all yeah, want to know us a little bit from the inside. Oh, is this my therapy section? <laughs> um, I would say the biggest thing about myself that I learned is that I need to be around people. Like I cannot, I remember when the pandemic started, bitch, I literally did not leave my apartment for like months. Like no one saw me. And I was so like miserable because like I like to feed off other people's energies. I like hanging out with my friends and just not having that available. I just couldn't deal with it. And plus I was working from home and like I couldn't get shit done because I would just lay in bed instead of actually working. Um, so yeah, that would be my biggest thing. I just need human interaction. Yeah, so the pandemic was this. Oh, okay, so let me just keep it word. On top of the pandemic, on top of the Black Lives Matter movement, I was going on through a lot of things personally with my family. And secondly, we had a lot of things going on with our friend group. So, 2020 rocked your bitch. Okay, it rocked the shit out of me, girl. Y'all know I was I know. up and down. And so I'm naturally a very strong person. I have, you know, I would say I keep myself fairly guarded. But one thing the pandemic taught me was to really trust those around me and to really be a lot more vulnerable. And so explain how I'm feeling in those moments. You know, talk about those things that, you know, you're maybe thinking about and keeping to yourself because eventually those things are gonna eat you up. And so while 2020 was so rocky, and really tough to get through. I'm super, super appreciative of those people around me that I was able to share how I was feeling with. Cause you know, it allowed me to bring my guard down a little bit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It allowed me to, you know, not be so apprehensive about sharing feelings or thinking that somebody's gonna use something personal that you tell them against you. You know, so I'm, I mean, in a way, I'm kind of thankful that for that moment, you know what I'm saying? Cause it really taught me that. Um, even though like, you know, I think she's been around a while. Y'all can't yeah. can clock the age, but be clear. This really um, brightened up my eyes about that. And I'm really glad I was able to do that. And so I feel a lot more comfortable sharing this more. Yeah, I like how yours was like, I've been through all this, blah, blah, blah. Mine was just like, I was bored. <laughs> but yeah, yeah I, did, I did feel like, you know, we got closer because of 2020. Because yeah. bitch, the amount of times I've seen this bitch over here cry <laughs> has been far too much. And be very clear, she doesn't cry around everybody. So the girls that have seen me shed a few tears, those some real bitches, honey. Those are the good Judy. Those are good Judy, honey. So super thankful for all of you guys for pushing me through that. And I appreciate y'all in your girl's corner. Cause you know, you know you have a support system, bitch. But things like that when you really go through shit, honey, and your girls show up and show out, it makes you feel even better, honey. So love y'all. <laughs> the next question is, how long have I been doing drag? Okay. Two days. Let me give you guys this good. Let me give you guys a little timeline and maybe I'll throw up a few pictures of you so you can see the progress. Girl, you sure about that? So you can see the progress, honey. It's been a journey. So in high school, that's when I basically discovered what drag was because of RuPaul's Drag Race. And honey, back then, you know, times are different. Back then, I didn't want people to know I was out here buying makeup. I didn't want people knowing what my business was all about. So I did what every good drag queen does back then. I stole all my makeup. <laughs> I'm keeping it real. I thought you were about to say, I'll take my mama and go buy it for me. Oh no. Kids. I stole all my makeup. <laughs> I stole so much makeup. And this was this is the old me. Now I don't steal anymore because I got I got a good job. <laughs> and I can afford stuff. Uh, but back then I basically stole all my makeup. You know, when it was 3 a.m., locked myself in my room, make sure my parents were asleep and put that shit on my face. And it wasn't until college freshman year that I started practicing more and more and more. And senior year, this was 2015, is the first time I went out in drag. I'll show you a photo here. As you can see, <laughs> as you can see things have changed. Uh, but yeah, 2015 after I graduated was really when I took it up a notch. Um, that's when I started you know, going out in drag more. I was performing in drag. I was really getting to know everything about the scene. Um, and then between now and then, I've taken some years off. I've taken some months off. There were periods when I didn't think about drag at all. But now I think I, you know, because of the channel especially, I think I'm in it for the long haul. Um, it really is something that I enjoy and it's like one of my passions. So 
Um, I guess technically I've been doing drag since 2015, so that would be six years. But if I make it on Drag Race, I'll be like, bitch, I've been doing drag for three months. <laughs> I guess. Honey, and then... The rest of it. Bitch, let me tell y'all, when I tell you Scarlet, I spent so much motherfucking money going to see this bitch every week at drag contest. I can't wait to send this bitch an invoice when she go on oh. Drag Race, honey. You owe me so much money! Girl. But it turned out, bitch, I mean, I can only, the transition from my girl's face and like just aesthetic and everything. <laughs> it, 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 she slay, she like, bitch, your makeup is beautiful. Honey, and they used to gas me up back then when I was looking like a whole man in a way. They'd be like, yes, girl, serve it. But it's my fr I would be like, it's my tuck okay? Yes, girl, that tuck is right. Went to a performance night judge was like, your tuck is wonderful. <laughs> They're like, that is a meaty tuck. I said, my, my friend said it was good. Honey, that's how you know they're your real friends, though. <laughs> So speaking of drag, I got this question a lot in kind of all different types and forms of questions. So I kind of combined them to make one full question. So would you ever consider doing drag? If so, what would your drag name be? And lastly, are you gonna do it for an episode of the main stage? Hmm, tell them about it, girl. I actually get this question a lot, ironically enough. So would I consider doing drag? Yes, I would do drag. Um, and to keep it very 100, I don't not I don't know how to do makeup. You know, I don't know um, what outfits I will wear as of yet. But one thing I can let you know: when she does drag, her name will be Slay on a Runway Ooh, because yes. I do slay on a runway. Catch it if you don't. Let me say it again: <laughs> Slay on a Runway because she slays on a runway. That will be my name. And lastly, yes, I do plan on dressing up for one of the episodes. But to keep it 100, I will not be doing that until we have reached a certain amount of subscribers on our channel. Yes. Scarlett and I have discussed it, and we have a certain number in mind. So tell your mama, your daddy, your brother, the sister to subscribe to the channel if you want to see her beat down Hi. and gown down. And that episode will be one for the ages, Cause, girl. Because, I, mean, I, I mean, and again, I love my fucking beard. I love my facial hair. So for me, I will completely shave this shit off. I'm not gonna be no beard queen. This will be completely slayed down. She will be completely stitched in. <laughs> Bitch, hair away for the God and the face to be. Girl. Yes, yeah, she will be. I can't wait for that episode. <laughs> So, bitch, y'all better tell everyone to subscribe so we can get to that day where we put this bitch in Yeah, drag. and if you haven't fucking subscribed, but you watch all our fucking videos, bitch, you better click that subscribe button. And if you don't have a YouTube channel, because I hear that a lot, oh, make your yeah. motherfucking YouTube channel, because I know you got an email. And if you don't got an email, you better make your motherfucking Gmail account right now. Her, <laughs> Now, back to the whole dating relationship aspect of our lives. The next question, y'all were some nosy bitches, is what is our ideal type and what are some of our turn-ons? Mm -hmm. So with me, I'm a little complicated. So uh -oh. if, if we're just talking about like hookups, right? I ain't no ladies, pull out your pin bag, pull out your computer, yeah. get ready to type it out. If we're just talking about hookups, I wouldn't necessarily say I have a type because I have been with so many different people. Mm -hmm. You can vouch for this, mm -hmm. I've been with every, Race, height, weight, age, personality trait, bitch. I've been with them all. Yeah. Um, you know, I had a little phase where, you know, I was getting around and, you know, a hookup is a hookup, like Aquarius said, any hole is a goal. So <laughs> that's it. So that was just it. Um, now, if we're talking about dating, I, I don't know. I feel like I don't really have a type. Just, I feel like it's the generic stuff, you know, be funny, be smart, um, have a good personality. Now, I will say, you have to be attractive. Like some people, some people will like be like, oh, you know, that's so. Um, what is it? Um, that's shallow. Like, shallow. But I mean, at the end of the day, if you're on date someone, you have to be attractive. To the them. first look is gonna catch your eye. Yeah. So I mean, and my definition of what is attractive is that you don't have to be a supermodel. Because I have sent my girls some photos of some of the guys I'm into, and they're like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> right. I'm like, girl, I know you fucking lie. Yeah. So I mean, I I don't have a time. If I like you, then I like you. Yeah, and I, I mean, I have also been with a lot of different, well, I would say every guy in the book as well. Um, however, I can agree with Scarlett, I have to naturally catch your eye, but a big thing for me is you have to have some type of intellect. I consider myself a very smart man. Yeah, you are. And so I... <laughs> you want to cut it in and say mine or you want to do your double? I like mine. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, but as far as like somebody I'm looking for today, um, one of the things that I'm, I like a mental stimulation, I guess I would say. I consider myself a very smart man. And so I would like to be with someone who is equally as smart. Or I wouldn't say equally as smart. I would just say someone who can teach me things that I don't know about. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not a guru. I wouldn't consider myself a guru in everything. But I, I mean, bitch, if somebody can teach me about, you know, the fish in the Pacific Ocean, that's attractive to me. I don't know anything about the fish in the Pacific Ocean. I don't you know, know about that one, girl. <laughs> I don't know about the fish now. Right. Or if you can teach me something, maybe say if you aren't from the U.S., you can teach me something about your home country. That's very attractive to me. Um, so, you know, just that mental stimulation is what is what is going to keep me going past the initial attraction level. Um, but yeah, I would say that's one big thing for me. But other than that, you know, I'm I'm pretty low key. I don't. I feel like I don't have like you have to meet this requirement, you have to meet that requirement. Um, but that is a very big thing for me. And I need someone who is gonna have some drive, honey. You know, she met her some of her goals, and she's trying to meet the next one. So, bitch, I don't care if you're a motherfucking um, scooping up the dog shit at the park, and you want to make it to the supervisor of dog shit. Bitch, you make it to that supervisor level. Don't be content with where you're at. Yeah. I need you to be that next level with me. Okay, you guys, the next one is a little more drag related. So the question is, who is our ideal all-star six cat? I personally don't care who's the all-star six, <laughs> to be very honest with you. I will tell you a couple girls I am looking for. I would love to see our ATL queen, Mrs. Trinity K. Bonet, honey, mm -hmm. the lipstick motherfucking assassin yes. of season six. I would love to see her back on the show. Um, and you know, I just think, I mean, I've seen her a couple times in Atlanta since she's been on RuPaul's Drag Race. She's such a nice queen. She's such a talented queen. That is one bitch that knows her lyrics up and down. Always looking so regal and always looking so beautiful. So I love to see her on All Stars competing with these other girls. Another young lady that I'm looking for is my good six plastic tiara, honey, who is also such a beautiful, regal queen who also slays it out and slick can lip sync as well. Has the look. Too. Honey, has the look. So if they don't, if they aren't on All Star Six, I would love to see both of them come back to shit. It's lip sync assassins. Yeah. Because they're just so good and so talented. I stand for both of them. Yeah, I had a whole list constructed, but it's all my phone, which we're using to film. <laughs> so I think some of the girls that I included were also Trinity K. Bonet, Plastic Tiara. Um, I would also love to see Kim Chi. Hmm. Um, she ain't coming back. <laughs> she, she, can't, she can't do makeup performance at Southern Nights in Orlando. She ain't coming oh, back. Mm -hmm. Honey, she said she has a makeup line. She doesn't need a drag race. I would love to see Pearl, even though RuPaul hates her. Um, who else? Oh. <laughs> Oh, I would love to see Lanacia Sparks, mm. April Carrion. Mm. You know, some of the girls that haven't really been represented. Well, yes. um, I do not want to see a bitch who's already been on All Stars come back again. Girl. Because there's so many girls that like need the exposure mm -hmm. and you know need a second opportunity to show themselves off. Because you know the girls have grown since then. Honey, where's Stacey Lane Matthews? How dare they put her in that cameo on All Stars Four? We need her to have an official fucking cast on this fucking show. Yeah, we stand for Stacey. Where's pork chop? <laughs> Bring pork chop back. That pork chop can stay at home for me. Ooh. But yeah, I mean, I'm fine with any of the girls, honestly. I think that they all have something to offer to the table. Next up is where is the craziest place that you've had sex? These girls don't know. So y'all yeah, are nasty. I know, they want to know so bad. I don't have sex, I'm a virgin. Oh, period. <laughs> Halo. Uh, but keeping it 100. If we're just talking hookup, I'm not talking about, you know, getting my back blown out, you know? <laughs> Just like, you know, maybe a little this, a little that. Mm -hmm. I don't really have, like, on the top of my head, I don't have any stories that come immediately to mind. But I will list the places that I have hooked up that are, that were not the bedroom. Let's see, we have the back of a semi truck. <laughs> we have the, um, the pool at an apartment complex. In the water? No, where it's like by the bar and stuff. Oh, okay. The uh, bathroom at Blake's, which is a bar. <laughs> Where else have I hooked up? Um, obviously in the car, we've all been in a car. Yeah. But I've also had a hookup where we were outside of the car in the parking lot and this lady was walking towards us so I had to like crawl around. <laughs> um, you know, just, I like, to, I like to experiment every now and then. And a lot of this was during my younger days. Now I just want you to come to my room, right. keep it simple and then get out. Yeah, I can agree with that too. You know, we some mature queens over here. We had, some, uh, we had a lot of little fun things when we were yeah. younger. Um, but I will also say outside the bedroom, I, I wouldn't say I had necessarily a crazy place, but outside the bedroom, of course, the beach, 
Um, I've also hooked up with someone on a sidewalk. I've also hooked up with someone in the alleyway. The sidewalk. Oh, <laughs> um, so yeah, I would say those are the craziest. I did have to jump a fence one time to escape a household. Oh. Um, and scraped up my entire arm. Nice. But that's not a crazy place because we were in the house. He just told me I had to run and get out because somebody was coming in the house. Who was coming in? I don't know. Now, whose house it was? Who's we don't know. Was? I don't know. But a bitch had scraped his entire arm. I was pissed the fuck off. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I, I can't think of any other crazy places. Uh, I've hooked up if <laughs> I've hooked up with my college teacher in his <laughs> office. <laughs> I hooked up with another teacher. He taught at like a middle school. So I hooked up in the band room he taught at. You know, just some things here and there. Well, oh, and that great thing. You had me thinking of all the stuff. I also hooked up in one of my previous jobs in the basement, in the bathroom of that oh, basement. That made me think of, I hooked up in the mall, but you know, in the back, in the back hallways where they keep the stock and inventory. Girl, I worked at Godiva. <laughs> Girl, did you get the chocolate around you, girl? Girl, I didn't. You know, I almost took one, though. Girl, you know y'all made that, milk, that chocolate milk all over the floor. Girl. <laughs> but yeah, that was just a little sample. But be clear. For y'all hoes out there to try to play us like we some slutty-ass queens, don't do it, bitch. This has been a... Ever since... Now, I am a strong 31, and this has been all the same thing. Well, I... I am a slut, so. <laughs> And that's okay. You know, we, we accept everyone as they are. Okay, you guys, so our next question is, what will be your ideal lip sync song? Like, your go-to shit and know you're gonna win this shit. Bitch, I have a fear. Go okay. ahead. Bitch, I would do, um, Love You, I Do, Jennifer Hudson from Dream Girl. Mm -hmm. And just to keep it in Dream Girl, I will also do I Am Changing. Mm -hmm. Bitch, I will play both of those down. And if you know me, you know I stand for my queen, Beyonce. So I will do Resentment, live version. If you don't know the live version, baby, go look it up. Cause the girl who I listen to get, she ain't gonna know that live version, baby. That's what I'm gonna get her, bitch. It's the ad lib. Honey, the ad lib, honey. And I would play that shit down. I'm, I'm really like, and I, I think we'll get into this question a little bit more, but I'll be more of like a ballad queen. Now I can do a one, two step, a boop, boop, and a bop, bop. Don't get it twisted. A boop, boop, and a bop, bop. Honey, she'll give you a, <laughs> ah, bitch. She'll give you that. But one thing I am a big fan of drag when it comes to women who can really emote, emotional song. That's really a talent to me, as opposed to doing a high kick, as opposed to doing a split. Don't be wrong, those are very, those are great talents. But for someone to truly emote an emotional song and make you be like, damn, bitch, I am feeling this song, that is a talent, honey. And that's what I will bring. Bitch clock Latrice Royale, honey. Mm -hmm, yes. Bitch clock Taste on the most recent episode of UK Drag Race. Those are two queens that will make you feel the song, honey. Yes. And that's what I will do. Yeah. So with me, I feel like I'm the complete opposite. <laughs> Give them, ah, 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 yes, Ooh. honey, I feel like my go-to is anything that is like high pop, like uh, anything by Little Mix, anything oh. by Fifth Harmony, anything Ooh. by Dua Lipa, anything that I can basically dance with, but I would have to, you know, come up with choreography prior. Now, if you threw me into a little battle on the spot, bitch, I could give you an eight count, but yeah, just basically anything I can move and groove and dance to. I haven't really tried a ballad um, before, but I think, I mean, that would be something that I think would be interesting. And I would love to do it in the future eventually, but I think my strength is definitely like more higher than you know. You're a dancer, you're a dancer, Tom. You know, I did a little dancing in college, yeah. but you know, I've also been out of the game for a while. So that was part of the reason why I was scared to go back, but you know, I just need a little practice and we'll get there. So next is, what is your drag aesthetic or what would it be if you were a drag queen? So this kind of fits with the last question we just answered. My drag aesthetic is basically like, bitch, the lead singer of a girl group is basically what I am. I love like girly things. I love everything that's pink. I love like just real high feminine energy. And you know, when I first started drag, I wasn't all about that. Back then I was like, you know, if I wanted to be like, look like a real girl, then like, that to me isn't what drag is about. It's about being an exaggerated version. So like, hmm. makeup like kimchi, like Trixie, like the girls off Dragula, like special effects, blood, all that, you know, crazy stuff. Stuff that you don't really like, like Crystal yeah. Method. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but as we've gone on, I've really leaned into like looking more feminine, you know, like right now. Yeah, you know, she's, she's real uh, fishy today. She is. 
But yeah, um, I would say that right now my drag style is, you know, just like very girly pop star, you know, gotta take over the world. And, you know, I do enjoy doing other, like, I guess aesthetics, but that is just my main one. Yeah, I would say, um, so once I do drag or once I get into it, I already kind of have my head of what I want to do. I'm going to be a fucking gown down pageant queen, honey. That, but I'm also going to be very like into like my curvature and stuff like that. So I'm going to be very like Roxy Andrews, honey, very um, candy muse aesthetic, stuff of that nature. Because, you know, bitch, I'm, I'm walking in at 6'3". So add a pair of six inch heels. Girl. I'm walking in at 6'9". Ah! Honey, so, but, on, be, on, on, on. Period. but be clear, she will, like, she's gonna be that pageant queen, honey. She's gonna be the goddess, honey. She's gonna be Aphrodite on your ass. And that's just kind of what I've always been into, you know, more so very glamour, very, you know, um, I don't want to say madam, because I don't think it was old, but a very mature woman who, you know, she she's about her shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's gonna be very me. Um, yeah, and so I'm looking forward to doing a bitch. I just, I just, I'm super excited, so I can't wait to read that number, girl, yeah. because I will be turning the party for you all. Yeah. And I'm excited to do it, but that's kind of like my drag aesthetic. You know, very, um, I would say, class day. Honey, you're, you're like the good old drag mama who yeah. hits you with a ballad. I'm like your drag daughter who's a little, you know, more new school, yeah. who's like into like the crazier thing. Yeah, bitch, I'm gonna give you Alexis Mateo. Yeah. Bitch, she binge. Yeah. <laughs> bitch, yeah. Period. <laughs> Girl, that, that's a good, that's a good point. So if you made it this far, first we want to say thank you. Hopefully you have learned a little bit more about us. We're gonna jump into our last question. What is the future of the main stage? So, you guys, the future of the main stage, we do plan on doing this for a while, and we know um, kind of like how you guys all don't know about RuPaul, or you know, kind of want to know a little bit more. We're gonna continue to bring you videos like this, bring you videos like our food challenge video, if you haven't seen it. Mm. Mm. I mean, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, what is that? <laughs> Girl, what? Did you touch it? Dog, you. <laughs> it's an egg. Take your way to the channel and watch it. But things of that nature, we're still gonna um, hold tight to our RuPaul because that's how we originally started this video and we plan on standing by that. But we do plan on bringing you a little bit more as well. So also tell us what you wanna see. You guys gave us the idea of a Q&A. You guys gave us an idea of the food challenge videos. And so we are here to deliver to you. Let us know. Yeah, basically everything you said. <laughs> I mean, not just drag race, but like other types of content too, you know, challenges. Q and A videos, you know, just all types of variety, just to keep you guys entertained. So yeah, let us know. And you know, this was just a couple of the questions that we've gotten. You know, we might do another Q and A video later. But Funny part too. If you guys have any questions that you want us to answer in a future video, drop it down below. You know, we literally look at every question that we got. Yeah. Um, and we have a lot more that we can discuss. Yeah, honey. Because if we would have all the questions, baby, knock off two or three hours on your calendar. Because our girls showed up and showed out. And as always, we appreciate the support. And we're going to keep delivering to you guys. Yes, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you guys in the next video. Bye, y'all.